I'd like to open this morning with greetings in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. May the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with us all. Amen. Good morning, everyone. You know, it is truly a, a blessing to see you all. We, uh, we are so encouraged by your presence. In the day and age that we're living, we need each other. We need to stand together as believers and encourage one another and provoke each other unto good works, unto love and to good works, like Scripture calls us to. And so I want to say thank you to Ken and Susan on behalf of the church, the ministerial, the, the brothers and sisters in the pews. We want to say thank you for what you've done, and we tr trust that the Holy Spirit will continue to lead and guide you, and that if it is Lord's will, you will be back here, and you will, we will again be able to work together. <clears throat> And so may God give his blessings. Before I open, I would I just felt led to open in a word of prayer. Please pray with me. Heavenly Father, we come into your presence this morning. We have dismissed our Sunday school children with the Sunday school teachers. We pray a special blessing upon them, Lord. We pray that the Holy Spirit will lead the teachers. Fill them with your your presence, Lord, with your joy and peace in knowing that they have children before them. They have fertile soil, that they are the sower and that they will sow seed today, Lord, and I pray that it will fall on good ground and that you will give the increase. And so I pray for your servant too, Lord, as the word of God is sown today, that it will fall on good ground, Lord, that it will be not in vain and that you will give the increase and that you will in return receive the honor and the glory that you will build your church because you say you will and the gates of hell will not prevail against it. So as we open the word, as we look into the word, I pray that you will reveal and just speak to us in a way that you see fit and would be bring glory to you in Jesus' name, amen. Jesus said in Matthew 4, verse 4, actually Jesus, uh, says what is written. He says it is written, and it's written in Deuteronomy 8, verse 3, where Moses, first of all, said it, and now Jesus in the New Testament quoted it and said, Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. And so we are in this world, and we are so concerned, and we do everything we can to, to make a living, which is right and, and, and true, and we are uh, called to do that. But we need to recognize more and more how desperately we need the Word of God. Because we are not to live by bread alone, or the natural, but by the spiritual. And today it is my prayer that our Heavenly Father will, will feed us, and that we have come with a hunger and a thirst for righteousness, because then we will be filled. And we know that everyone is on a journey. Each one that is sitting here, young, old, middle-aged, whatever you're, wherever you are at, you are on a journey. You're traveling through this life. And when we think of traveling, we want to put it into perspective. Many of us and most of us have probably even taken a trip or two or, or many trips. And we know that when we travel, we need to know what road we're on so we will arrive at the right destination. If we're on the wrong road, we won't end up at the right destination. And I've had that experience, and it can be a long way back when we're on the wrong road. Sometimes we've been daydreaming, and you miss a corner. And it, uh, if it's a one way, it takes you a long time to get back. But spiritually, we are on a journey. And there is only two roads. And I'd like to, two roads to eternity. So we would ask today, the road that you're traveling, where is it taking you?
Jesus himself, again, as we want to go to our text in Matthew 7, verse 13 and 14, he himself speaks here concerning the two roads that people travel on. And according to scripture, as we will read it, there are only two roads. There's only two destinations. But today we know that there's many people that believe that there's many roads. They can travel as they please or where they please. Even believe that there's many ways to God. Let's see what scripture says in Matthew 7, verse 13 and 14. Jesus, this is still the Sermon on the Mount, says, Enter ye into the straight gate, for wide is the gate, and broad is the way that leadeth to destruction, and many there be that go in thereat. Because straight is the gate, and narrow is the way which leadeth unto life, and few there be that find it. This is really the, the message which the whole Sermon on the Mount has pointed to. It comes to a crossroad. He brings it to a point where we need to make a choice. It was also for the scribes and the Pharisees to make a choice, to check our lives if we line up, if our life lines up with what the Bible teaches, what God's command are, are. and not just a religion that takes us away from the true gospel of Jesus Christ. We have an account of two gates here, which we individuals are faced with in this life. And people, we read here that there's people on both roads. And the roads, they lead to different destinations. Jesus says, enter ye in at the straight gate. The straight gate is like we read in verse 14, because straight is the gate and narrow is the way which leads unto life and few there be that find it. That gate that leads to life, life eternal, is straight. And the word means a tight place, narrow or small. And that brings me back to the complete message of Jesus from, from chapter 5 in the Beatitudes. When we think of a tight place, a narrow place, Jesus said in the Beatitudes, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are they that mourn, for they shall be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. Blessed are they which do hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they shall be filled. Blessed are the merciful, for they shall obtain mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called the children of God. And blessed are they which are persecuted for righteousness sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. And in verse 32 or 22 it says, But I say unto you that whosoever is angry with his brother without a cause shall be in danger of judgment. And whosoever shall say to his brother, Raka, or fool, or empty head, shall be in danger of the council, but whosoever shall say, thou fool, shall be in danger of hellfire. Jesus says the gate is narrow. It is a straight gate. And then we think of the gospel in Luke, in Luke 13, verse 13, verse 24. Luke 13, verse 24, Jesus says, Strive to enter in at the straight gate. For many, I say unto you, shall seek to enter in and shall not be able. In 1 Corinthians 9, verse 25, it tells us to strive for the masteries. In Hebrews 12, I believe is, is very important for us to remember when we think of the straight gate in, in Hebrews 12 verses, a few verses I'm going to read there 
In verse 1 it says, Wherefore, seeing we are also compassed about so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside, let us lay aside every weight and sin that does so easily beset us, and let us run with patience the race that is set before us. Looking unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith, for the joy that was set before him endured the, cross, the shame, despising the shame, and is set down at the right hand of the throne of God. For consider him who endured such contradiction of sinners against himself, lest he be weary and faint in your minds. Galatians 2 tells us, Paul says, I am crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live, yet not I, but Christ lives in me. And the life that I now live, I live by faith of the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. When we think of that narrow gate, I'm reminded of Hebrews 12, verse 1, lay aside, which means repent of all your sins. Willful sin and open sin is the gate to destruction. Verse 13 of Matthew 7, it says, Enter ye in at the straight gate, for wide is the gate, and broad is the way that leadeth to destruction, and many there be which go in thereat. Jesus is revealing a truth, what is really happening in the world. Pride is the entrance to damnation. And Jesus says for us today, he invites us, enter in at the straight gate. That is an invitation or a command. And by faith walk the narrow way of saving grace through our Lord Jesus Christ. When we think of the golden rule, the verse just prior, verse 12, Therefore all things whatsoever ye would that men should do unto you, do ye even so to them for, of this, for this is the law and the prophets. We know that we will never enter into the kingdom of heaven by only keeping that rule. We need Jesus as our Lord and Savior. The golden rule will not save you, and you must enter the straight gate, straight gate through a living way, having faith in Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior. A conversion must take place from self to Jesus Christ being his follower and keeping his commandments, as you read in Matthew 28 at the, in the Great Commission, those that keep his commandments. Which then, when we have accepted Jesus Christ, then includes the golden rule. Jesus said, straight is the gate and narrow is the way. What Jesus really meant is there is no other way to enter into the kingdom of heaven except through faith in Christ alone. The place of entrance is narrow because it refers to faith in Jesus Christ and no one or nothing else. It is through Jesus Christ. Jesus is the gate. When we think of Jesus in the last night when he was together with his disciples, before he went to the cross, he was together with his disciples. He had a Passover meal. And they prayed together. They sang together. And let's picture it. Jesus knows that he's going to die shortly. He's going to die for the sins of the world. And so if we would know that we are not going to see each other anymore, we would give special instructions, the instructions that are the most important. And so that's what Jesus did. He focused on the things that were the most important, things that he wanted the disciples, the apostles, to know. So just before he was crucified, he made a statement. He made a statement which we read in John 14, verse 6. Jesus said, I am the way, 
the truth, and the life. No man comes to the Father but by me. And you know, Paul said the same in Acts 4, verse 12. There is no other name given among men whereby ye must be saved. It is through Jesus Christ and him alone. And in John 10, verse 7, Jesus said, Verily, verily, I say unto you, I am the door of the sheep. John 10, verse 10. Uh, 9, Jesus said, I am the door. By me, if any man enter in, he shall be saved. The straight gate, Jesus Christ. Philippians 3, verse 14, Only let your conversation be as it becometh the gospel of Christ, that whether I come and see, see you, or else abstent, I may hear of you your affairs, that ye stand fast, in one spirit, with one mind, striving together for the faith of the gospel. And I believe that today is a time we're living in where we need to stand together. We need to be diligent. We need to stand fast in one spirit, with one mind, striving together for the faith of the gospel, for the cause of Jesus Christ. That the world can see that we are his disciples. If we look at the narrow gate, if we look at verse 13, it says, enter ye at the straight gate. Enter ye in at the straight gate. In John's gospel, and in John 10, I'm going to read John 10, verse 7 to 10. Then said Jesus unto them again, Verily, verily, I say unto you, I am the door of the sheep. All that ever came before me are thieves and robbers, but the sheep did not hear them. I am the door by me. If any man enter in, he shall be saved and shall go in and out and find pasture. The thief cometh not but for to steal and to kill and to destroy. And I come that they might have life and that they might have it more abundantly. Brothers and sisters, here we have two roads, and each one of us is on one of those roads. Every other religion is a thief, a robber, a, and, and Satan, he has come to, to steal and to kill. So today the question is, are you going to reject Jesus Christ and entering in that narrow gate and walking on the narrow way. You know, brothers and sisters, you don't have to look very far in the world. And you, see, you can see how, how desperate people are in their life. We just had a young man here this morning. His name is Jamie. I'm going to ask you to continue to pray for him. Satan is robbing him of the joy and the peace and the blessings it brings of being in, walking in that narrow way. He's on the broad road <clears throat> and he needs Jesus and he, 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 he acknowledged that. So let's continue to, to pray for him. It calls us here to enter the straight gate. It's not saying do it tomorrow. It is saying do it today. That's what Jesus said to the disciples or to the, to the scribes and the Pharisees. Take action. Jesus has been teaching the way of life in the Sermon on the Mount and it is not wide like people make it out to be by their lives. Today we hear so often an easy gospel preached except Jesus as your savior and then you can live as you please after. The way after the gate is narrow and that applies to all believers. We cannot just dabble 
in the world, in Satan's affairs, in evil. We must walk that narrow way. Jesus said, narrow is the way which leads unto life. And I don't know in the light of eternity if we can be serious enough. If we think of, there's a time coming where we will meet the end of our life in this life. And what have we chosen? Have we chosen the wide road or have we chosen the narrow gate, which is Jesus Christ and for the forgiveness of sin? On the broad road, there's all kinds of tolerance or tolerances. There's all kinds of accepting of sin, inclusion. You hear so much today, just like the scribes and the Pharisees, religious, but denying the power of God. And on that broad road, the message is you can believe what you want. I believe the scribes and the Pharisees would by now have seen that the message Jesus was giving became more and more narrow. If we want to be in Jesus' kingdom, this is what he asks today. Enter in at the straight gate. So many people have been heard, they have been taught, and later on in life you see them not walking the narrow way. Today, I want to encourage all those who have not made a decision for Jesus Christ, enter in at the straight gate. I'm just reminded of the time when I got baptized in Martinville. The church was full at that time. There was two rows of pews, and there was two pews on each side of baptism candidates. Today I ask myself, where are they? We must walk on that narrow way. It is important to notice that Jesus didn't ask us to enter into the wide gate. He asked us to enter into the straight gate. He said, wide is the gate that leads, and broad is the way that leads to destruction. In, in, in 2 Peter 3, verse 9, the end of the verse, Jesus said, The Lord is not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. This is the only way to salvation, through the straight gate. We must enter that gate, which leads to, to life for yourself. It's a personal decision. It's a personal calling. God calls each one of us personally. And you must do it personally. We, People today like to do what the next person does, where the crowd is. That's where people like to be. But here at this gate, you must enter yourself. You must leave your sin at the cross and enter that gate. Let's not just be so influenced by what our friends do. If they take us down the wrong path, let's take a stand for Jesus Christ. Stand firm and strive to enter into that straight gate. And Jesus today, through the Holy Spirit, is asking you, you alone, enter that gate. I want to give you life. And I want to give you abundant life.
It tells us here that few there be that find it. Jeremiah 29, 13. And ye shall seek me and find me when ye search for me with your whole heart. Matthew 7, verse 21 says, Jesus says, Not everyone that saith unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven, but he that doeth the will of my Father which is in heaven. We cannot just display a holy appearance and inwardly carry all kinds of unrighteousness like hate, hating our brother, and all those things that Jesus mentioned on the Sermon on the Mount. Matthew 7, verse 15, it says, Be aware of false prophets which come to you in sheep's clothing, but inwardly they are ravening wolves. We are to be awake. Luke 13, 24 says, We are to strive to enter into that straight gate. It is more than just an easy life in the kingdom of heaven. He says, Work out your salvation with fear and trembling. We cannot work enough to be saved, but after we are saved, we are to work out our salvation with fear and trembling and striving to walk that narrow way. way. All of scripture, we see that we are to be diligent. And I think we as believers we need to check ourselves. Are we diligent in our walk of faith? Luke 18. I want to read, read Luke 18. Verses 18 to, to 30. It says, A certain ruler asked him, saying, Good master, what shall I do to inherit eternal life? And Jesus said unto him, Why callest thou me good? None is good, save one that is God. Thou knowest the commandments. Do not commit adultery. It's exactly what we read in the Sermon on the Mount. Do not kill. Do not steal. Do not bear false witness. Honor thy father and thy mother. And he said, All these have I kept from my youth up. And when Jesus had heard this, these things, he said unto him, Yet lackest thou one thing, Sell all that thou hast and distribute among the poor, and that thou shalt have treasures in heaven, and come and follow me. The narrow way. And when he had heard this, he was very sorrowful, for he was very rich. And when Jesus saw that he was very sorrowful, he said, How hardly shall they that have riches enter into the kingdom of, of God. I share that because we live in a world of, of plenty. Our riches will not fit through that narrow gate. We must let them go. For wide is the gate and broad is the way that leadeth to destruction and many there be which go in thereat. And how sad many people on the broad road they're there because everybody else is doing it. On this road, all our self-righteousness, your evil heart has, no, has, has room. There's no, no repentance. There's no self-denial. And that's what the flesh loves. There's pride, self-glory, Tolerance. According to Ephesians 2, I just want to share Ephesians 2, verse 2, and four, 2 to 4. Ephesians 2, verse 2 says, Where in time past ye walked according to the course of this world. We were there, according to the prince of the power of the air, the spirit that now worketh in the children of disobedience. 
among whom also we all had our conversation or our citizenship in times past in the lust of our flesh, fulfilling the desires of the flesh and of the mind, and were by nature the children of wrath, even as others. Those are those that are on the broad road, but God, who is rich in mercy, for his great love wherewith he loved us, when we were dead in sin, hath quickened us together with Christ. By grace are ye saved. We, we also know that in, in verse 8. For by grace are ye saved through faith, and that not of yourselves. It is a gift of God. But we must enter through the door, through Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ is the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes to the Father but by me. He is the gate. And after the gate is the way that leads to life, brothers and sisters. When we enter that straight gate, we give up our own will for the will of Jesus. Romans 12, 2 tells us, be not conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. When we renew our mind, we focus on the word of God like we are here today. We need to hear from God. We need to hear the truth. We need to hear what God, his plan is for his children. It is like we find in Philippians 3, verse 14. I press toward the mark of the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus, Paul says. And that should be our aim, to walk that narrow way, to press toward the prize of the, of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus, growing toward the fullness of Christ in a new and a living way. <coughs> Allowing Jesus to lead us. Where are we at today? And after that gate, there's a road or a way. And that way is narrow. It's not so wide as many people make it to be. We come into a life of growing in Jesus after we enter that gate. <clears throat> Ephesians 4, verse 13. It says, Till we all come into the unity of the faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God, unto a perfect man, unto the measure of his stature, of the fullness of Christ. It's a growing, it's a sanctif sanctifying process in that narrow way. And that narrow way, when we study the Word of God, we learn that our selfish ambitions, our selfish desires, they must disappear, they must be crucified, and we must take God at His Word and follow Him and His will. When we come into the life, when we enter that gate, we are not coming into perfection, but we're growing and following. It will not be complete till we see Jesus face to face at the end of that narrow way. We will see him face to face as he is. The gate is Jesus. The choice is ours today. My prayer that the Holy Spirit will convict those who are listening that have never entered that narrow gate, that they will enter that gate through Jesus Christ. That gate, entering that gate is a starting point, a starting place. Jesus said to Nicodemus in John 3, verse 7, Marvel not that I said unto you, ye must be born again. We've all experienced the physical birth, but we all must experience a new birth through Jesus Christ and have his spirit living in us. 
ye must be born again. Dear friends, those that are listening, are you going to enter into a life with Jesus that you know that road will take you to life, eternal life? Or are you going to continue on the broad road and knowing that that road will take you to destruction, eternal condemnation and hellfire? Jesus said in Matthew eleven twenty nine, 29, Take my yoke upon you and learn of me, for I am meek and lowly in heart, and ye shall find rest unto your soul. There is a point of entering that road, that relationship with God. And how beautiful when you hear testimony and people can testify that they've accepted Jesus and they've lived for Jesus all their life. What a, what a blessing. Just like that song we sang this morning, that always brings a real blessing to me. I sang that as a young boy. I have decided to follow Jesus. Can you sing that from the heart? Are you convinced that you're, you have decided and that Jesus has come to save you, to seek and to save you? It's not of our own works. It's not in our own strength. My prayer that you will be faithful to the Holy Spirit. You will be faithful to the Word of God. And I know that it's God speaking to us today because when we open the Word of God, He is speaking. And today Jesus is saying, Enter ye in at the straight gate. There is a point of entering a relationship with God which calls us then to repentance. And he will pardon. Moses in the Old Testament, he saw the need to call his people in Deuteronomy, verse 30. De Deuteronomy 30, verse 19 and 20, he says, I call heaven and earth to record this day against you that I have set before you life and death. What are you going to choose? Blessing or a cursing? Therefore choose life that both, of the, that both thou and thy seed may live. That thou mayest love the Lord thy God, that thou mayest obey his voice, and that thou mayest cleave unto him for he is thy life, that thou mayest dwell in the land which the Lord God swear unto thy father, to Abraham, to Isaac, and to Jacob to give, that, to give them. And so we are calling, the word of God is calling us today to walk that narrow way. Enter that gate for those who haven't entered. And for those who have entered, God is calling us to walk that narrow way which leads into life. And he says very clearly, and few there be that find it. Strive, seek, be diligent. You will find me if you will search me with your whole heart. It means giving up everything. That broad way is a way of sin. It allures multitudes onto that road and it keeps them in it. The gate is wide and the way is wide. There is abundance of liberty. You go in at that gate with all your lust. It gives no check to your appetites, your passions. You follow the way of your heart. And that is the thief that comes to steal that life that Jesus has come to give you more abundantly. The end of, end of, end of life. And even that starts in this life. There's hypocrisy 
There, it leads to destruction, and many are on that road. How sad. So it is my prayer that today you will have heard the word of God, not my words, but God's words that we enter into that straight gate. And I want us to hear, for wide is the gate and broad is the way that leads to destruction. Are you on the right way? Are you going where you would like to spend eternity? The only way that leads to life is Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. That is the only way that leads to life, a narrow way. There must be a new heart, a new spirit, all things must pass away, and they will pass away when you give your life to Jesus. It's, it's so simple, just, just commit yourself to God's way and accept what Jesus has done for you. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, I pray that the Holy Spirit will continue to speak. Lord, we feel so inadequate to share the urgency that you have shared in your word. I pray that the word of God will have spoken to us today. Lord, I pray that we as servants, we will continue to put Jesus in the forefront and that we hide ourselves and that you continue to use us, Lord, to further your kingdom, that you will build your church. Lord, as a servant of God, I have no desire to be here if it isn't you speaking through me. Lord, I pray that we as servants will learn to surrender our lives totally into your will, your way, that you can use us to further your kingdom, that people will be drawn to Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. May we live, may they see Jesus in our lives. Lord, I pray that you will go down the pews today. If there's those that have entered that gate and have been saved by grace, and they have erred from that narrow way, I pray, Lord, that they will surrender to you. I pray that they will be a light for you, that they will provoke others unto good works, love unto good works, Lord, that we will encourage one another in our walk of faith as we see the day approaching where we could face more persecution than we maybe have in the, in the past some generations. I pray, Lord, that we will be able to stand. You call us to stand, be firm, to take a stand, to put on the whole armor of God that we will be able to stand against the wiles of the devil and his devices. I pray, Lord, that we will be diligent. Lord, we pray for each one here, their spiritual walk. Lord, when they don't understand, may they walk by faith, just trusting you that you will continue to reveal yourself as they grow, as you continue to sanctify them, as they grow in their Christian walk, as they as they grow in maturity, they grow in love and unity. Lord, that is our desire here as a church, that we can continue to grow together and that we recognize in a very real way that we need each other. You have used the body, our natural body, as an illustration how the finger needs the hand and the hand needs the shoulder. And we each member needs each other, and so we can understand that we need each other. May we see that, 
So many people think, well, we can just do it on our own and be by ourselves. Lord, this is my prayer that our fellowship will be sweet, that it will be encouraging, that we can love each other and help each other along in life's journey, that we learn how to carry one another's burdens. And we have so much to learn. Lord, I pray today we will all say, use us. Use me to help others, to cheer them on in their walk of faith to the finish line. Lord, we pray your blessing upon this service. We thank you for each one that has come, for each one that is listening. Lord, it is such, such a blessing that we can share the words of life. May you receive the honor and the glory. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. I thank the Lord for calling song leaders to choose songs that are such a blessing. You know, this song is a result of entering that straight gate and walking in that narrow way. Narrow way. Then surely goodness and mercy shall follow us all the days of our life. And what a blessing. Then we can rest in that. We can, we can trust in that. We walk by faith. And so I just want to call you as a church together to continue to pray for... There's, there's many people that have, have been sick. There's people that have passed away. And I want you to pray for them. I see Pete and Linda are not here today. They were dealing with health issues. I would like to encourage you to pray for them. Pray for Colleen Rappel. She's here by herself now. I know that will be very hard, but we want to continue to commit ourselves to praying for you, Colleen, as a church. I, I, I want to invite you, be on your knees, interceding for them, for George and Agnes, Bill Duick. His wife was had the funeral yesterday, and he's in the hospital, couldn't be there. He was spent, I believe, 71 years together, and he couldn't be at her funeral. But we know God is gracious, and he will have provided for, for him. And so there's probably others that I'm, I'm missing. The Holy Spirit leads you. Let's pray for our young families that are raising children. Let's pray for men in the church that are supposed to be a light to the younger, men and women. There's so much that we need to pray and, and we need to check ourselves as a church. Are we walking that narrow way? It's my prayer that the Word of God will have spoken to us. It's my prayer that God will give the increase. And I also want to thank you all for coming. It has been a real blessing to see you. And I want to just ask you to join me as we bow and as we think of the benediction. Now unto him that is able to keep you from falling and to present you faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy to the only wise God our Savior be glory and majesty, dominion and power both now and forever. Amen. You may depart. May the peace of the Lord go with you.